Welcome to video four of series three. And in this video, we're going to get into the basics of code. Uh, so I'll go through the code structure, you know, what it looks like inside. And then we'll write a welcome script that just gives a uh, welcome message. All right. So make sure to have opened your Unity project. And uh, well, if you saved it somewhere sensible, you'll have found it and you're back in. OK, and now we're going to write a script. Uh, so a script is your instructions to tell the game engine what you want to do with whatever you attach that script to. Uh, so why don't I just make one? Now, I do like to uh, make a folder here. I'll call it my scripts. Very imaginative. My scripts. And uh, I'm going to make a C sharp script. And I will call it welcome. So you have this name here. Don't click away. Otherwise, that will become the name of the script. Actually, I'll do that. So I'll click away. OK, and I've created a new script that's called new behavior script. And I can open it up inside. Uh, I was about to say mono develop. I'm so used to it, but it's Visual Studio. And I'll rename it here. So this is the name of the file. And when you see here some stuff here, don't get hung up at all on this stuff. Don't get yeah, don't get uh, all scared of all this. It's it's all nothing, actually. It's just, don't worry about it if you can't read it. It's not for you. It's for a machine to read. Well, okay, fine. It is actually for you to read. Right, so this using business here is just saying that we're uh, going and accessing this whole big namespace, as it's called. It's basically, we're gonna, you're about to turn this, uh, you're about to put all this in a namespace in this video. Uh, anyway, but this is like a big library of heaps of codes and lots and lots of files are within this and you need to access it otherwise you can't use any of the unity stuff uh, basically that's it that's what you're saying using unity engine it's by default it's like that and then there's this other one system dot collections but anyhow uh and it's visual studio is very intelligent it knows that we don't actually need that right now but that's because i haven't written anything so of course i don't need it once i'm using stuff then it'll become white. Uh, and then, oh, you might also be wondering why on earth is uh, my my uh, layout look so dark and the colors are different? Well, it's because I just went and changed them in the tool options setting and I just changed my layout or changed my fonts. I didn't like the default white one. It's burning my eyes out. So I went to a dark theme instead. You can change the theme. Uh, all right. So I was continuing on. And then you see here public public class public means this script is accessible to all other scripts if you call it by its name and you know where which game object you put it on uh, and then class well a class is all this stuff inside of it um, and then the new behavior script that's the name that you gave to the file it's the name you've given to this class uh, to all of this stuff and then this colon here means deriving from mono behavior mono behavior is the unity api stuff so if you go here you can do this through google as well just pull up the scripting reference and you type in mono behavior what is a mono behavior uh yep and it's got a u okay and that's it and there you go. So mono behavior is everything. It's everything in the Unity API, the application programming interface, if I've got that um, correct. Uh, and everything is inside this. So you must derive, if you want to fiddle with the game objects or do any Unity stuff, any Unity uh, related game engine stuff, you have to derive from mono behavior. And it's a good name too. Mono behavior is a very good name because your scripts are behaviors. You're creating like behaviors for your game objects and you attach the script to the game object and then it does something when you play. I think, I, th I think, I always think that it's a very well selected name. It's a good name. And then there are these two methods here, a start method and an update method. These are default unity methods. These, you will write your own, lots of them. And another thing important, case is very important in C sharp. You cannot have this and expect it to be the same function it's a different function so the case is very important capital letters are very important so this is a default function it runs some it runs in a default some there's some stuff hidden in the background basically whenever you start the game uh, every script that's in the scene its start function will be called and whatever instructions you've placed within the start function they will be called when that scene loads up and the update function is called every frame. What is a frame? Uh, how about I turn on the stats panel here? 
and then hit play and then uh, you'll see that uh, it's saying 91 frames per second so the screen is getting I guess redrawn that many times per second and every time a uh, frame happens that update function on any script that's in the scene will get called and any instructions with that within them will get called uh, so that's what that means and uh, of course the more stuff you have going on the slower your game gets and then the lower the frames per second become uh, but anyway that's another story uh, right so those are the vo start and update functions now I want to rename the script so I've given the wrong name it's wrong name so I'm gonna put it call it welcome type in welcome and uh, save that and I'll just control C that copy it here go back to unity and rename it so f2 or just click on it gently and just put it in control V paste okay done and now it's correct uh, now, I'm expecting a warning message to come up about line endings. I'm surprised it hasn't. Um, oh yes, reload. It needs to reload because the name's changed back in Unity. So I'll do that and go back to Unity here. I am still surprised it hasn't come up. No matter. Now I wanted to get onto namespaces. Why you need them? Because if you have two scripts of exactly the same name and they are both in the global namespace, you will get an error message and that you cannot run the game and everything will fall apart. So for example, if you imported an asset from the asset store, which has lots of scripts and that author hasn't used place their stuff inside of a namespace and they happen to have a script called welcome and you happen to have a script called welcome and you've got a big project and you've written lots of stuff accessing this welcome script you'll be in a bit of strife because uh, suddenly your project isn't going to work and you need to go and change all of the imported code or you need to change your code and it's just all messy so I'll show you what that looks like right now what kind of error message comes up so I'll create another C sharp script and I will also call this welcome okay and there you go there's a problem it says the namespace uh, global already contains a definition for welcome it's already there you've already got a script with welcome you can't have two uh, so to overcome that I will open up back my original one the one within this folder I'll open that and I will place everything in a namespace so type in namespace hit tab when that appears sorry I went too quickly so when that appears the autocomplete business here the IntelliSense is doing its job press tab and it will uh, uh, well, I guess it'll, it'll put it in. There you go. And then you need to give a name to the namespace. So uh, what's an intelligent name? I don't have one. So I'll just put chapter one. Make sure no spaces. Can't be any spaces, right? So don't do this. Don't put a space and then expect it to work. It won't be happy with you. And then you've got to put in these cur I don't know what they're called. Don't ask me. I always get confused. What's a bracket? What's a round bracket? What's a curly brace? Or whatever. I think this is a curly brace. I'll just call it encapsulating character. And now I need to cut all this. So highlight it from here, from the very end. Cut this with Control X, Control V. And you now have everything inside of a namespace. And let me go back uh, to Unity. And there you go, the error message is gone. It now is happy that you've got two scripts, even though they're both called welcome, but one is in the global namespace and one is in the chapter one namespace. So if you made any more scripts and they weren't in the namespace chapter one, in order to access the class, you must then say using uh, chapter one, for example, and you can see it appearing there actually right here. You would say using chapter one and uh, by the way, just something in C-sharp, you need to put a semicolon there, so just remember that. But anyway, we're not doing it, we're obviously not doing it from another script, it's this script itself. Okay, so you've got the first bit done. So you've got, uh, you've put it in a namespace, it's happy, and I just want to uh, get rid of that inconsistent line endings thing. This is, uh, I guess it's, I guess it's written for, well, I don't actually know the real reason. Maybe it's because it works for Macs and stuff like that. So they've written it with a different program. Well, what's happening is whenever you create a new behavior script, that script is coming from a template, which has different line endings to Visual Studio, because I guess it was not created in Visual Studio. So you just, what I did as I closed the script down, I went back to Unity. I double clicked on it in the console, brought it up here, and I will say, yes, convert it. Yes, thank you. And hit Control S, save and uh, there you go and now the thing will be uh, gone okay good all right so now I need to actually do something I want to have a, a welcome message so I'm gonna make a new method uh, I will call my method um, 
void. Uh, methods can be of many types. A method, all instructions in C sharp code, they have to be inside methods, uh, these blocks of code. And a void type of method is one that doesn't return anything. And of course, what I just said probably makes absolutely no sense. Uh, well, what it means is that I'm not, um, I'm not going to return anything from it. So you can, there's all sorts of types of methods you can write. You can write ones or whatever. It won't make any sense to you right now if you're brand new to this. We'll get into that later. The best way to learn code is to just write lots and lots and lots and lots, even though if you don't know what on earth you're doing, that's how you learn it. You learn just by doing and eventually one day it clicks and you go, oh, right. That's why I'm doing that. Right. So now you need to write a method. I'm going to make this one up. This is my own method. I'm going to call this a void uh, my welcome message. And you need to follow the characters very carefully. Make sure they're the same shape. I don't know what it's called always confuses me. And uh, then inside of here, that's it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a unity thing. It's called debug.log. And I'm going to put inside of it, note the, the quotation marks. This means I'm putting inside of it a string, a, a variable of the type string, well, just the thing type string. And I'm going to say welcome and close uh, the brackets, whatever it's called, the encapsulating character, and that's it. And you make sure you've got the semicolon. You, oh, you'll get caught out by then. You'll obviously forget, and then you'll write something on the forums, and then realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm just silly. I just forgot to do that. And make sure when you call a method now in the start function, because I know this is going to start whenever the script is loaded, uh, I need to obviously type in the method I want to get called. So I'm going to call the my welcome message whenever the script starts up in Unity. I put my encapsulating characters and put a semicolon. Now these methods, they can take uh, arguments, they can take parameters into them. So you could, well, it's, ah, uh, it's too soon. I won't do that to you now. Look, just absorb it for now. I'll delete this just to make things more, uh, well, no, I won't delete it. I'll comment it out even better. So to stop it from running needlessly, you can use the comment out, just comment it out. Uh, comments are just these uh, two slashes here. I don't know if it's a forward slash or a backslash. I always get confused about that too. Uh, but anyway, so that's how you do it. You can also, there's another type of style as well. You can, if you wanted to comment out lots of stuff, you can use this and asterisk. And you can also uh, put another one here, an asterisk, and that closes everything in uh, comments. Uh, so that's another style. Another style is, uh, so comments are not uh, run in code. They're not code. It's just for you as a human being to read it. They're discarded when the script is compiled. It's just uh, rubbed off. It's nothing there. Right. So now that I've got this bit of script ready to go, it, let's how about I run it and you'll see nothing. Absolutely nothing happens. Oh, why is that? Because you've got to attach it to something. It's a mono behavior. You've got to attach it to something. Don't expect it to run. So let me just create an I could attach it to anything, but I know I'll just make something here. I'll just call it a welcome uh, uh, for some reason. And I'll just attach the script onto it. And now I'll hit play. I'll save my scene, hit play. And there you go in the console. There's welcome. So I guess the, the uh, uh, well, it should have been hello world because that's what is always used, but whatever. I just used welcome. Okay, so that's it. You've got your first bit of code running, and you did a bit of namespace stuff too. Uh, let me show you something more. Do I have to type welcome here? Why don't I make a variable? So a variable is a, a bit of, it's a, it holds a reference to something. So I'm going to have, first of all, private. A private variable is only accessible within this script. Other scripts cannot access it. Uh, so a private string is the type. Anything with characters, like letters and stuff like that, these are strings. They're called strings. Just remember it. Just learn it. That's what it's called. Private string, um, my message, and you could call it anything, whatever. It doesn't matter. And if you just put like that, then it's empty. Um, it's nothing assigned to it, but I can assign it to it here. Oh, remember, just write your variables within the class, okay? They have to belong to the class. Don't try and write them up above the class here. That's silly. Uh, okay. All right. 
uh, and then I'll say it's equal to um, what should I call it uh, well I call it welcome this time I'll get rid of the exclamation mark just so you can see the difference coming back here I know that the debug.log requires a parameter that's of the type string or it must be converted to a type string so I can just put in here my message and it will get placed here all right I didn't make a mistake so if I run it now and I have clear on play so it just clears the log and there you go welcome without the exclamation mark how about I show you common mistake so the most common one you'll make is getting not putting the semicolon but Visual Studio is very smart it will help you it'll point out these problems and stuff and there you go and you can't run the game nah it sells you go and fix it what are you doing and it's very clear it's actually it's actually very helpful um, tells you there's some parsing error and whatever you'll get used to it if you double click on it it'll take you to the line where it's finding the error and if you look around there wow well, it's obviously a problem semicolon is missing so if I save that now it's okay I can come back and the errors are gone I'll just clear that okay I'm not finished what if I want to type this what if I want to input it in unity and then I make this a public or I want to access it from other scripts then it needs to be a public variable uh, so this is the type it's a type string I mentioned that already and I can have something there it doesn't matter it's not actually important now this is what would appear there by default now if I go to the game object that has a script uh, there you go there's the uh, there there's the variable my message and I can type in the message here uh, so I can put in welcome or oh, how about I just do it in caps lock and sound like I'm shouting all right and now if I hit play that's what appears okay so done all right so I think that's enough for this video you've gone and written your first script it's in C sharp you put it in a namespace which is excellent practice this was exactly what you should do and you'll save yourself headaches uh, well entirely you'll not have any headaches by putting stuff inside of the namespace and then you wrote your first method uh, the my welcome message it didn't return anything it just simply carried out some instruction uh, well, that was it. It just carried out an instruction. Now, of course, it will not run. So, for example, if I comment it out there. Yeah, this is good. So, I'll just clear that. If you hit play, nothing is going to happen. Because you commented it, it's not doing anything. If, if the start function is where you need to do it, or you, another unity function is void awake. So, you actually, yes, rem remember these. Awake is another function. You can also read up on it in the scripting reference. Awake is called before start. So if you needed to, for some reason, call it before the start, you will find situations where you need to do that. Then, yep, yeah, that's where you put it in awake. And now if I call it, there you go, it's called. And remember, I told you case is very important. You can't put a small a. This is a unity function, inbuilt function here. You can't put a small a and expect it to work. Nothing will happen because that's now become your function and unity has no clue what on earth you're talking about. Okay, so now it's back to a unity function. Another one is on enable. Uh, on enable is whenever the script is enabled. I'm pretty sure that's after awake and before start. I could be wrong, uh, but anyway, let me see what happens when I run this one. And we'll be using on enable lots and lots and lots and lots. Okay, so if I run that, okay, done, good. All right, so that's all good. And I'll get rid of that. I don't need it. And I'll just uncomment this. And I've got my welcome message back. It's all good. And what about if you attached, if you had more than one of these game objects, you know, lots of game objects. I just duplicated that many times. They all have the welcome script. You hit play. Well, they're all going to run. So you got lots of welcome messages now, four, one for each. Uh, so that's how it works. That's how you get your script to work. You attach it to something. All right. So that's enough for this video. In the next video, we'll do some more interesting stuff. And it's all scripting now. All right. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.